At the Game Awards, we got our first teaser trailer for the next Mass Effect installment, and I think it's already very clear how much I love the Mass Effect trilogy, and if it's not, then well, now you know. Give me any excuse to replay those three games, and I'll play them in a heartbeat. I know some people are less forgiving than others about the Mass Effect 3 ending, and to be honest, rightfully so, because it didn't just feel like the end of a story, it felt like the end of a galaxy, in the sense that it didn't seem like we'd ever return, say, to the Milky way and explore it after the impact of the ending of 3. On top of this, it wasn't what I'd considered to be especially satisfying, if you get what I mean. But based on this teaser, it wouldn't seem as if the next Mass Effect title is going to be a continuation of the Andromeda story at the very least, but rather a continuation of the trilogy in some, at the very least, limited capacity. All the shots of space are cool and all, but this trailer gets really exciting when we arrive on this snow planet. But we see somebody walking through what appear to be freezing temperatures until they come across what appears to be a piece of armour with the N7 emblem on it. In the background, as she walks, you can see what appears to be a downed reaper. And there also appears to be a lot of debris besides. So could this be Commander Shepard's armour on Earth? And if that is the case, then what happened to Earth? That's the question. So this shot could be of Earth and the Moon, however there appears to be some other Moon-like planet thing in the background. This could just be the perspective that is Mass Effect for the art style sense, but it doesn't look far enough away for it to not be a moon, so that would poke a hole in the theory. But of course, the figure picking up the N7 plate is of course none other than Liara to Sony, which means that at least Liara is back in this Mass Effect title. In the corner, you can see what appears to be a massive moon in the sky, which could be another hole in the theory that I seem to have been hatching about this being Earth, but I mean, if it's this cold, and this is actually Commander Shepard's armor that Liara is picking up, then this is London. So, if this is Earth, it has changed drastically and could look like anything, and the moon could be closer. Alternatively, this could be set before the ending of 3, around the beginning of Mass Effect 2, in the two years between Shepard being temporarily killed by the Collectors, and being brought back to life by Cerberus. Because if you did the Norman DSR-1 crash site in Mass Effect 2, you'll know that it didn't crash land on a particularly warm planet so it could possibly be some sort of pre-sequel. Furthermore, we do know that Liara did search for Commander Shepard's body, and was the one who retrieved it and handed it over to Cerberus, who revived Shepard. Though, why would there be a downed Reaper here at all, were that the case? But the space aspect of this trailer seems to show the Reaper invasion and the destroyed mass relays, which makes me think that this is set after the trilogy. And it's not like Commander Shepard's gear is going to show up on random different planets. If it's Shepard's gear at all, I presume that's the symbolism. I mean, I'm probably wrong somehow and there's some explanation. There's no real context to any of it, it's just a teaser. In the background of this shot, we see that Liara is not here alone and she has brought a crew. A Solarian, what looks like it could possibly be either a human or a Quarian, though I can't make out any distinct features, and what could be either a Turian or a Krogan. At first I thought it could have been Garrus, but I think, you know what, it's more than likely a Krogan, not a Turian, so there you go. I can only go off what my eyes can see, and it's quite obscured to be honest. There's probably somebody here who can point out why it's one or the other, please do, that's what the comment section is for. But if Liara's in this game, then I don't see any reason why Garrus, for example, wouldn't be. I don't know who the Solarian is, I think for obvious reasons it's not likely a character that we've met already. As for this third character, could it be a Quarian like Tally, or could it be a human that's deliberately obscured so this might be our player character? That being said, I think a lot of players would like to be able to choose their playable race in the next Mass Effect game, so I frankly have no clue. As for the ship we see, well that was actually shared in some art a few weeks back when they announced the Mass Effect trilogy remaster, the Legendary Edition. I reckon this is the ship we'll probably be using to explore in this Mass Effect game, if that's the kind of game that it is. But it's definitely a lot smaller than say the Normandy, and might function as quite a cramped hub area, especially compared to the Mass Effect trilogy. Obviously it doesn't indicate anything, but maybe this could be more like a Jedi Fallen Order style game? Maybe we'll just be playing as Liara, maybe it's a different approach entirely? I know, it's gonna probably be years before we even get to sit down and play this game, so I don't think they'd be announcing something like that this early. So the chances are good that this is going to be some full-on Mass Effect adventure. I mean everything, even the obvious in a teaser trailer for something that's not gonna get any information for a while is pure speculation, isn't it? 
Obviously, coming in spring of 2021, we've got the entire Mass Effect trilogy being remastered in the Legendary Edition, so I reckon it'll at least be another year or two before we start to hear anything proper beyond what we've got already. But, I mean, I could be wrong there, and the timing of this remaster is clearly to reignite that love for Mass Effect in a lot of players, so that there's actually hype for this game, because off the back of Andromeda, I don't think it would hold up, and so by that logic I can't imagine it being stupidly far in the future either. As for my thoughts, I'm obviously going to be keen, I really do love Mass Effect, but I'm going to try to curb my excitement as much as possible because of, well, Bioware. Mass Effect Andromeda was far from a magnum opus, and Anthem was just not good. There's no beating around the bush with it, at least in my opinion, Anthem is a dreadful game. And of course, Bioware will have their hands full trying to rejuvenate that, and also develop and release the next Dragon Age title. And on top of this, recent news from Bioware is that Casey Hudson has resigned. If you don't know, he was the general manager at Bioware, but at the time of the Mass Effect trilogy's development, he was the project director. It'll be interesting, if not a bit concerning, to see what Mass Effect looks like without him, but it's worth remembering that no game like Mass Effect is made by one individual, and there are likely still plenty of people at Bioware who care enough about what Mass Effect means for Casey Hudson's departure to not be as big an issue as maybe some people have been making it out to be. But like I said, Bioware's current track record is hardly promising and so everyone's concerns there are 100% justified, and I don't think even Bioware themselves could argue with that. I think it is wise to be cautious and not get too excited too quickly, Though I won't lie, when I saw this teaser, I felt quite happy inside for a bit. It's certainly enough to get me interested, but there's still no assurance of delivery quality. But I think if Bioware didn't have an unfortunate turn in form, I would be bouncing off the walls right now. But I instead find myself re-watching the opening to this video, taking a shot every time I say the phrase there appears to be. If you do that, you'll get drunk quite quickly. <laughs> so my general mood right now is, I'm quite curious, I want to know- is that even a mood? Or is that something else? Uh, who cares? I'm very curious to see what the plot is of this next Mass Effect entry, how it drives the franchise forward, and what it does with these characters who it seems to be bringing back. The only one that we're aware of actually being Liara, though I doubt she's the only one, because she's not the only character you can get attached to in Mass Effect. I think the Legendary Edition remaster of the trilogy is going to remind us of all the characters in Mass Effect that there are that we love. And so if anything, it makes me excited to play the remaster because that way I get a refreshed experience of the original Mass Effect trilogy before this next game comes along and then takes that and does something else with it. But you'll have to let me know what you think down in the comments section about all of this. I'd imagine there are some people out there who aren't happy at all about Mass Effect making some form of comeback because to them the story's told, it's over, why not leave it at that? Which is another angle I 100% understand. But if nothing else, I think there's still plenty in the Mass Effect universe to be explored. And I'm quite chuffed to see that Andromeda won't be the final Mass Effect experience that we'll ever get to have. Anyway, I think that concludes this video, so thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Maybe be sure to go ahead and leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff, that would be fantastic and massively appreciated. And with any luck, I'll be catching you all very soon with another video at some point, but until next time, take care and goodbye.